Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Tuesday session for Lab 8. I see we've got a really small uh, set of attendees this morning, but I'm going to record this anyway so that those who are joining us later on or later in the week uh, can still get this introduction. It's not especially important to me that everybody shows up to these scheduled lab sessions. The most important part is that you get some input on how to achieve the lab, and then that you get together with your group and work together to actually achieve the objectives and, uh, and get the lab report in. So last night we had uh, a synchronous session, uh, active learning session. We showed you this video. And we want let you watch and follow along with the blank slate video to uh, cover some of the coding activities, and uh, and we did a bunch of troubleshooting with uh, with those who were there last night. So today we're going to concentrate on the hardware and how to use that code that we reviewed in these videos on Monday night uh, to get some data and make sense out of that data. So if I just move that down out of my way. Uh, this was the calibration starter uh, sketch that I was going to get you to run. And if I run that sketch, uh, it will come out and give me a set of simulated calibration data. It's going to read random data from the, uh, from the itsy bitsy and impose a little order on it to give you values from zero up to 180 degrees. And we saw that it started down around 19,000 and it's going up to eventually it'll get there. It looks like it's going to reach about 50,000, 51,000. Okay, so pretty close. So that data you would take and put into a spreadsheet or into Jupyter Notebooks or something to fit a straight line to that collection of data. You're not going to be horribly far off if you just take 19,000 to zero and 51,000 as, uh, as 180. But you need to use this simulated calibration data to do the part of your report where you're commenting on the quality of your calibration and the uncertainty in the, uh, in the position measurements. So you'll need to actually do some analysis on this data, even if you go on and use a different calibration relationship to get your measurements and your uh, position and velocity and acceleration information. So we take the data from here. We go over, this is the blank slate video that I, I ran. And so I've pulled some numbers. I've got uh, 51,300 for about 180. And when I looked back up here, I saw, yeah, it looks like, Oh, it looks like it might be 19,800, not 19,700 uh, for this particular set of data. So I can set up my calibration accordingly to translate from an analog read value into a position in degrees. And of course, these two numbers have to agree. Otherwise, you're going to get your, uh, your scale wrong. So if I run that one, then it should be printing out some data showing what the position and the uh, estimated velocity and acceleration are. Now, obviously the acceleration and, or sorry, the velocity and the acceleration should be zero if I'm not moving the potentiometer. And right now this is showing that the potentiometer is in a position of about negative 1.1 degrees. So let me just see if I can adjust that and get closer to zero. There, that's very close to zero. So you'll notice that the arrow is pointing off in this direction if I've got zero degrees. Now I'm going to adjust it. And it thinks that 90 degrees is somewhere around here, going about that way. And finally, if I adjust it some more, it thinks that 180 degrees is pointing almost straight down in this direction. So my range of motion is from this angle to about that angle. 
that's not 180 degrees included angle there. And if that really troubles you for making the measurement, you could do a recalibration so that you had, say, this position lined up counting as 180 degrees and this position here, again, lined up with the blue line vertically as zero degrees. It's not gonna really change your calculations in terms of getting the rate of motion of your uh, potentiometer. But if it makes you happy, you can make an adjustment like that. What I'd like you to avoid is to avoid turning all the way to the end stops like that, or all the way to the end stops like this to represent zero degrees or 180 degrees. Because you see, if I turn a little bit back from the edge, there's a little bit of dead space there in that potentiometer before I actually start to see changes. So let's stay out here in the linear range of motion of the potentiometer in the middle for our 180 degree range and not get right up against the end stops. And that's good general advice for making position measurements. You don't want to be going to the very end of the potentiometer in part because the potentiometer is not as linear there. And in part, because if your system moves all the way to the end, then if it moved a little further than you expected, it would probably break your potentiometer unless your potentiometer is a lot stronger than the system that's actually in motion. So stay in the open range in the middle of the potentiometer to make your measurements. Um, so today, That'll get you to the calibration point. So you've wired it up. You're not using this one with the protractor. You're using the, uh, the other one that we've got, our little blue potentiometer, where we're faking that 180 degree variation. But you will still be able to get a calibration relationship. The blank slate video shows you how to do the simplest derivative calculation from a new position and an old position, the difference between positions divided by the difference in time to give you an estimate of the velocity. The same with velocity, a difference in velocity divided by a difference in time to give you an estimate of the acceleration. However, it's really noisy. So your task today is gonna to be to get some smoothing onto that so that you can actually get answers that make some sense. So that the velocity and acceleration are close to zero when it's sitting still and don't jump all over the map when it's in motion. That's, I think, all you really need for this week. The hardware setup should be fine with the potentiometer just plugged into pins A0, A1, A2. Uh, and I'd be happy to take any questions at this point. You can unmute your mic or, or put something in the chat. <laughs>